Hello, uh, this is S.K. Williams, and today I would like to talk to you about religion. More specifically, I would like to talk to you about the misconceptions about what religion actually is, and what actually constitutes a religion. Because when dealing with religion, which is one of the most popular topics to discuss online, many people suffer under misconceptions, shall we say. Of course, the most common thing you run into would be people who equate religion with Christianity and will say things like, religion was disproven because such and such in the Bible is wrong, or religion requires you to believe the entire Bible is true, or religion requires you to believe in Jesus, which simply isn't true because not all religions use the Bible, and unless you're some form of Christian, or at least a religion derived from Christianity, Jesus probably isn't going to come up all that much. That's not to say that Christianity should be dismissed, but when you're dealing with what religion is, you should be very clear that there is a distinction between a religion, like Christianity, and religion in general. Though to be fair, I think people realize that, but are simply lazy in thinking and equate Christianity and religion in their own minds, but the moment I say something like that, they would readily agree. The problem comes when I say other things. For instance, I often tell people on the internet that everyone is religious, including atheists, and I get the typical response that atheism isn't a religion, it's a lack of belief in a god. Atheism is a religion like bald is a hair color. Atheism is a religion like not collecting stamps is a hobby. Atheism is a religion like not playing sports is a sport, and other such things. And it really irritates me because I never actually called atheism itself a religion, and yet that's what people assume I'm saying. In fact, they assume that the only way an atheist can be religious is if atheism is a religion. I know because once I concede that atheism isn't a religion, they tell me how contradictory my position is, and will even ask, how can an atheist be religious if atheism is not a religion? They act as though the only way an atheist can be religious is if atheism itself is a religion. And if atheism is not a religion, then atheists are not religious, which is as silly as arguing that belief in a god means you can't be religious. After all, theism isn't a religion. And if theism isn't a religion, then being a theist means you are not religious. The only way a theist can be religious is if theism is a religion. It's a silly argument, but it's one that I get rather routinely. So, what is religion? This is where it becomes difficult, because my intention in making this commentary is to give you an understanding of religion to the best of my ability. But religion as a term is notoriously difficult to actually define, and ultimately there is no clear consensus on what a religion is. Of course, this is the internet, where one can easily expect to find me being called out for such statements, since the definition of the word religion is easily looked up in the dictionary, and it has a very clear, uniform, official definition that anyone can see, so either I am a liar or I am an idiot. Before someone does that, I'm going to address the official definition of the word religion in the dictionary, so that I can get the dictionary definition argument out of the way. The typical dictionary definition argument makes a presumption that is rather unjustified. And that is the assumption that there is only one dictionary. This may seem like an unfair criticism, because anyone you ask will tell you that there's more than one type of dictionary in the world, but they don't act that way. Whenever someone tells you to look it up in THE dictionary, they act as if there is only one. That's what the dictionary would mean. After all, they're not telling you Oxford or Webster's or 
or the world dictionary or, or anything like that. They are simply saying the dictionary. And you may think that's pedantic, but it's really not. Because if they don't mean this, then they seem to be assuming that even if there are other dictionaries, they all agree on what words actually mean. And if you look up the definition of the words, they will be the same in no matter what dictionary you use. Which brings up another problem with using the dictionary, and that is the presumption that there is only one definition of a word in any given dictionary, and that's not true either. When people use the dictionary definition of religion online, they're typically referring to the first definition of religion that one finds on Google, which, from memory, it may not be word for word this, but it's something rather like the belief in uh, superhuman controlling powers, especially a personal god or gods. And from there, they will say that the belief in a god is a prerequisite for a religion, and atheists don't believe in any gods, therefore atheists can't be religious because atheists do not believe in a god. But that isn't really the official definition of the word religion. That's just the one that you see on Google, and the original source for that definition is actually the Oxford English Dictionary, which I happen to own. I own the unabridged full multi-volume set. What's funny about that is, if I were to look up religion, in the dictionary that I have, the print dictionary. I don't find a single two or three line definition of belief in a superhuman controlling agency, especially a personal god or gods. I find a several paragraph entry listing around six or seven definitions of the word religion. The Oxford English Dictionary doesn't really limit religion to belief in a god, or makes belief in a god a prerequisite for a religion. That's simply a definition within the Oxford English Dictionary. It is not the definition. And if you look up religion in most dictionaries that I have found online, the free ones that you can easily gain access to, you will easily be able to verify that what I'm about to tell you, and that is, the word religion does not have a definition, but rather several. Of course, the other problem with the argument by dictionary definition is the assumption that dictionaries are infallible and can't be wrong, and you are not allowed to question what they say, which itself is nothing but an argument from authority, since dictionaries can, and often are, mistaken on some things. That's not to say dictionaries are wholly unreliable or completely valueless, but they're not infallible. And the idea that you must unquestioningly believe something because it's in the dictionary is itself problematic. But it's obvious that it's being used as a polemic in order to create a distinction between atheists and religious people in order to maintain the popular debate between atheism and religion. Because if you accept what I'm about to tell you about the nature of religion, and you accept that atheists are themselves religious, then you no longer have that clear distinction. And ultimately, the atheist movement relies on there being a clear distinction between atheists and religious people in order to perpetuate itself. None of the other claims that are made would make sense without that division. Then again, the whole atheist narrative requires the words that we use to be defined a certain way, such as faith needing to be defined as belief without evidence, or at the very least, this being the definition of faith in the context of religion, the religious definition of faith. So the impression being created is that if you believe in a god, you are religious, and if you are religious, you believe things without evidence and are irrational, and the fundamental difference between an atheist and a religious person 
is that an atheist is logical and rational and scientific, and an atheist refuses to believe things unless there is evidence to support the conclusions, whilst religious people believe without evidence in a millennia-old book of myths and fairy tales, and that they only believe because they were brainwashed as babies, and they never think for themselves or subject their beliefs to reason and know how irrational they are. And that begs the question. A question I'm not going to elaborate on, because I've done it in other videos, earlier than this, and I intend on doing a longer, more elaborate video later, dealing with the definition of words, and how they are used, and the contrast between atheist and religious people, and how artificial it is. But for now, I'm going to discuss religion in general. The only reason I discussed the atheist community is because I'm going to explain why I view them as also religious, and in part cover why I think this division is artificial. I'm just not going to go into elaborate detail about it, because that's not the point. And I'm also going to talk about them because of the conflict that they supposedly create, because the atheist community is the one that talks the most about religion, and to date, whether we like it or not, are the ones that largely define the conception of it that is used in pop culture these days. And it is a conception that is unfortunately not a very good one. But contemporary atheism isn't really the focus of this video, it's simply something that I need to address in order to explain my point, because of how the atheist community tends to function, especially if for some reason this particular commentary takes off. I don't have very, very many viewers on my channel now, but if I ever gain more, they might pick up on this, and I'm sure would attack the conclusions I'm making. Not that this won't happen anyway, no doubt that if a militant atheist hears this video and shares it with his friends and they get all pretentiously angry and flock to me, they will ignore the actual thought process behind what I say and typically call me an idiot and a typical religious person making the argument that atheism is a religion, how stupid I am, and use the dictionary definition argument, and I've had this conversation before, and in text no less, where they can actually reread what I had said. I mean, technically you can re-listen to it in an audio format, but it's easier in text, and they simply don't. Still, the atheist community is important to address but mainly because they're the ones that frame the discussion in the modern world, not because they are the crucial element of the actual discussion. The question that I intend on answering is, what is religion? And I intend on answering it in a very broad and vague way, because there is no actual clear specific definition of the word religion. Please look it up in an encyclopedia like the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, or the Encyclopedia Britannica, if you have it. You could also look it up in various university encyclopedias. Wikipedia, if you must. It's not the most reliable, but you can look it up there, I suppose. Religion is a more complicated topic than people really give it credit for. And a lot of what I'm going to say will come off as strange or bizarre if you're not used to this kind of thinking, which is unfortunate because it's the kind of thinking you get in academia. I do have a degree in this field that's explicitly what I'm basing this on. I've spent years studying it. But I don't sound like I've spent years studying it if you're used to the internet chatter because, again, militant atheists dominate this field and they sound smart because they speak with confidence, but most of what they say is really absolute gibberish, and they don't really know what they're talking about. Uh, famous atheists like Aaron Raw may have been atheist activist for 20 years, but that doesn't mean he's actually studied religion for 20 years, and people like him or Matt Dillahunty don't actually know what they're talking about, or if they do, they're not being honest about it. But I will be, because... Yes, I'm a Christian, but even if I were an atheist, I would be saying the same thing. Because the study of religion is ultimately the study of humanity. And it's precisely because of how religion functions that it is the study of humanity. There is no such thing as a person on this earth without a religion, and no such thing as a culture without one. Even if 
the atheists get their way, and religion dies, and reason prevails, you will still have religion, we just won't call it that. So that brings me, now that I'm near the 15 minute mark, to the specific answer. What is religion? Religion is nothing more than a set of beliefs about the nature, origin, and ultimate meaning of our existence, and how best to live and engage within it. You may say that this is a description of worldview, not religion. But the point I'm making is that there is no difference between a worldview and a religion. And the term worldview was invented so that people with no religion could have a description for what their belief system is without using the word religion. And the point I'm making is that the people with no religion actually do have a religion, they just don't like calling it that, so we invented the word worldview so they can use the word worldview instead of religion because they are more comfortable with it. Another word you can use to describe religion is philosophy. And if you're going to tell me that there is a very clear distinction between philosophy and religion, no, there really isn't. I mean, think about it. What makes something a philosophy instead of a religion? Is it the fact that religion deals with gods and the supernatural and philosophy doesn't? Because many people we call philosophers, like René Descartes or Spinoza or Plato, all discussed God. Were they philosophers, or were they religious thinkers? You could say that philosophy differs from religion because religion is based on faith, which is belief without evidence, and philosophy is the quest for truth through evidence, but this is wrong for two reasons. The first is, again, faith isn't belief without evidence, even in the context of religion, and two, there are philosophies that reject evidence. When you really look at philosophy and try and come up with a difference between it and religion, you pretty well have to contrive that difference, such as calling irrational, calling religion silly or irrational or superstition while calling philosophy a love of truth. But when all is said and done, philosophy and religion are the same thing. And a worldview is nothing more than a, a philosophy or religion that you follow personally, and that informs your decisions. And that is precisely the point. There is no distinction between a philosophy and a religion. They are the same thing, and ultimately religion is nothing more than a belief system that one holds to and that one determines one's identity around and how one understands and engages the world. That is what religion is. Religion doesn't require belief in a god, doesn't require belief in a superhuman controlling agency, doesn't require belief in the supernatural. Religion is nothing more than a belief system one holds to. As such, even secular belief systems that we tend to not think of as religious or whose current followers explicitly state aren't religions, actually are religions. This includes belief systems whose followers are adamant that they are not religions, such as secular humanism. And secular humanism is interesting because its followers not only claim that they are a philosophy, not a religion, but will also tell you that what they are presenting is an alternative to religion. The reason this is interesting is because it begs a certain question that the humanists don't seem to want to address. And that question is, if I can become a secular humanist, and use secular humanism as an alternative to religion, then why isn't secular humanism itself a religion? After all, secular humanism tells me that it can fill all the same functions in my life as religion would. Therefore, I don't need religion, I can be a secular humanist instead of following a religion. 
But if it does all the same things that a religion does, why isn't it a religion? And whenever people do ask this question, it's usually the same type of rebuttal that comes off as rather a semantic. For instance, they will tell you that secular humanism is atheistic, and therefore not a religion. Which, of course, presumes the defining trait of religion is belief in a god, and that if you do not believe in a god, you are not religious. But I've never really believed that, since there are atheistic religions, such as some forms of Buddhism, and I need to stress some forms of. A lot of people on the internet especially seem to think Buddhism is atheistic. It's not. There are Buddhist gods. But not all forms of Buddhism necessarily believe in gods. But the claim that Buddhism is more a philosophy than a religion is equally silly since it's obviously classified as a religion and people who follow it generally call it a religion, unless you're one of those pretentious westerners who adopted it because you think it sounds cool. Some of them might say it's not a religion, but it's a religion. But here's the thing, if you can have atheistic religions, why is secular humanism not a religion if it's atheistic? Like I said, I intend a longer video on that topic, but the thing that I want to really drive home on this isn't really about secular humanism in itself. It's rather about the fact that the people who think that the world would be better off without religion in it, or at the very least, think that you don't need religion, you can substitute it for something else, in the end do the same thing that religion itself does. And even all of the flaws that religion is often criticized for having also exists in all of these supposed alternatives to religion. People can be just as blindly devout to secular humanism as they are to Christianity or Islam or Buddhism. People can be just as willing to believe that their leaders are infallible or unquestionable. People can be just as dogmatic. People can be just as unflexible. People can be just as intolerant. It's not like believing a god exists somehow makes you worse, and since these people do seem to assume belief in a god is what distinguishes something from being a religion from being a philosophy, it just comes off as incredulous. I know one of the most common rebuttals to this is that, at least with a secular ideology, these are just people and they're understood as just people, whereas in a religion, the ministers speak for God, and who are you to question God? To question the ministers at your church is to question God himself, but that's not really true of most churches, and even where it is nominally true, like in the Catholic Church, most people still accept that their priests are human and aren't some perfect vessel for the will of God. And when it comes to Protestantism, I don't know that many Protestant churches that view their ministers as divinely appointed by God himself and speaking only the truth and if you challenge anything he says, you're challenging God himself, so be quiet. That's not how that works in the real world. Just like in the real world, it's not true that if you believe in a God, you're inherently more willing to kill other people who don't believe in your God than an atheist would for kill people for believing in a god when they don't. It's not really that simple, nor is it that different. Religious belief is ultimately nothing more than the things you believe in and do. The truth is, the concept of religion we hold today is a thoroughly modern creation. It began around the 1500s, and since then has actually permutated a few times, but while the idea of religion itself did exist before the 1500s, no one in the ancient world had an idea of what religion was. And again, I will remind you, I'm not defining religion as belief in and the worship of gods. I know that in the ancient world, people worshipped various gods, so before you tell me how stupid or uninformed or dishonest I am, because religion clearly existed in the ancient world and I'm denying that religion existed, again I will repeat myself, I'm not defining religion as the belief in and worship of gods, 
And when I say the idea of religion didn't exist in the ancient world, what I'm actually saying is that they didn't have this special category of thought in mind where they have religion and religious thought over here and science as a distinct category over here and philosophy over here and the secular life over here and politics over here as clearly defined distinct things. I'm not saying that people didn't worship gods in the past. They did. It's just that the people in the ancient world didn't understand that they were engaged in religion when they were worshipping their gods. The word religion itself comes from the Latin word religiar, which means to bind, and while we're not exactly certain about the origin of the term religion, at least in as far as it's describing anything close to what we believe religion is, most people generally think that it either refers to a collection of rituals you engage in that bind you to a certain belief system, hence religiar, to bind, or that binds you together with your community, again to bind, or else that it's a set of principles which bind you. We're not really sure, but the point is, prior to Latin coming up with the term religiar, no one defined their worship of gods and burning incense in temples and prayer life as religion. And they didn't see it as distinct from other things they did, like picking fruit off of trees or engaging in politics. To them, it was just a matter of course. They believed their gods exist. So they worship them, they give them offerings, they ask for help on various issues. The things that we view as distinctly religious activities, they viewed as simply normal activities that made sense, because to them, this is just reality to them. The gods are just real things to them. And even the later philosophies viewed the gods in more allegorical or metaphorical contexts, still viewed them as real beings to an extent that you actually engaged in. So, when you look at the origin of religion, you don't really see it as being distinct from the culture people come from, or it being distinct from the beliefs they hold. It's only in in the Middle Ages that the term began to be applied more strictly, and even throughout the Middle Ages the concept of religion was not quite what it was after the 1500s. And even then, it's mostly a European idea. Asians didn't have a distinct understanding of religion until Western colonization started in around the 16 to 1700s, and the modern idea of religion that we hold didn't begin to take root in Asia until the late 19th century. Japanese people didn't view Shinto as religion and as being distinct from everything else they did. For example, Shinto was simply a part of the culture of Japan, part of their belief system, part of their identity, part of who they were. It wasn't a distinct discipline to which you would study independently. So to a large degree, religion doesn't actually exist, at least not as this separate thing that's independent of other things. Religion as a category is one we invented for convenience, and then because we have this category, think has this obvious reality behind it when it ultimately doesn't. That's not to say religion doesn't exist at all, it's just that religion isn't genuinely distinct from other types of beliefs. And even when you look at things that we in our modern culture view as science instead of religion, especially in the West where we've come up with this idea that science and religion are opposing forces and are actually opposites, the truth is that if you choose to believe in science instead of religion and reject religion and believe in science instead, you're still ultimately embracing what forms a religion, including mythologies that explain who you are and where you're from. Though I should be very clear, when I say mythologies, 
I don't mean stories that are made up and not true, or stories that only gullible people believe. A myth, in the academic sense of the word, is a story that explains something about the human condition or morality or principles, and that transcends the mere history of it. A myth can be a hundred percent true. A myth can have absolutely no exaggerations to it and be a real historical event, provided that it has taken on a life beyond just the historical facts, provided that it's not just something that happened, but serves as the embodiment of certain things that define you, principles, morals, beliefs, values, ideals. A good example of that would be the American Revolution to Americans, or even to people outside of America these days. Though to be perfectly honest, what most people believe the American Revolution was isn't what it actually was. There's a lot of exaggerations regarding the way people imagine the American Revolution. A lot of it is oversimplified, and some of it is just flat false. But the American Revolution is still a real event from actual history and the people who were involved in it that we most revere, like George Washington, or Thomas Jefferson, or James Madison, were all real people. However, the American Revolution isn't, for many people, just this thing that happened in the past that happened to found America. It is the living embodiment of the principles and ideals of what America stands for and America as a belief system. America's founders are even today spoken of with great reverence and awe, and when we listen to political debates, we talk about what the founders wanted, or the founders intended, or the vision and ideals of the founders, and carrying that forward. The events of the American Revolution, at least how they're framed in our retelling of it, as a struggle against a tyrannical king, George III, who denied us rights and freedom, and how poor farmers rose up in a struggle against tyranny, led by the greatest and most moral of men, who fought a war valiantly for our freedom and overthrew not just a tyrannical king, but the system of kings that held man in oppression and shackles, giving us freedom by giving the power to where it belongs, to we, the people, giving us a republic in which we bow to no kings and are free. That is a mythology. And it doesn't matter that it's based on real events. It doesn't even matter if it was entirely true. It's a myth because the people who fought the American Revolution especially the Founding Fathers of the United States, are no longer just people in history who did something. They are the avatars of the ideal and philosophy to which America is founded on, an ideal and philosophy to which Americans are expected to share in, and which has now inspired many around the world. In many ways, America's founders are religious figures. and. If you read the Bible, you'll see that it's not even all that unusual to link political events to religious events at all. Look at Moses freeing the slaves on the exodus from Egypt. And I know, atheists, the exodus never happened. It was a myth. It never happened. Not only am I not convinced that it never happened, but I don't care. The point I'm making right now is that it is a political event. So even if Moses never existed and the Exodus never happened, it's still describing a political event, but doing so in terms of the context of a religious belief system. Moses freeing the slaves from oppression in Egypt and leading them to the Promised Land is no different than the story of America's founders breaking the chains of tyranny under King George and giving us not another kingdom but a republic in which we are free. It is a story we tell that defines us as a people and embodies certain principles and ideals and tells us why we should revere certain things. In the story of Moses, we learn to revere not simply freedom, not simply being an Israelite, but also Torah. We learn to revere the law of Moses because Moses 
the great man who led us from slavery in Egypt went up to Mount Sinai and God himself gave us these laws and it doesn't matter if you believe this or not the point is Moses becomes in our minds the living breathing exemplar of Torah law and why we should follow it just as George Washington and James Madison and Ben Franklin are the living breathing avatars of why we should believe in the Constitution and America's ideals the same can even be said of certain scientific theories. For instance, the atheist community is very fond of talking about creationism and contrasting that to evolution and the debate between evolution and creation. And of course, they will endlessly discuss how creationists want to ban the teaching of evolution in school and replace it with creationism, which is not actually true. Creationists tend to want to have equal time for both theories, not get rid of evolution in favor of creation. But one of the criticisms they keep giving creationism is that it's a religious idea, not a scientific one. Therefore, it should be taught in religion classes, not in science class. But in reality, evolution is just as much a religious idea. And again, I'm not saying that because I'm saying there is no evidence for evolution. It's taken on faith, you believe without evidence. Nor do I need to be told what a scientific theory is. I know we religious people don't know what theories are in science, yada yada yada. My point that I'm making isn't that. Again, I am not arguing there's no evidence for evolution. I myself accept evolution. I am not a creationist. But evolution transcends the mere facts of history regarding evolution and becomes something that shapes the way we understand ourselves and our identity. And to some people, it becomes the way they understand all of existence, like with Richard Dawkins and how he talks about it. Evolution is essentially the same thing as creationism in the context of studying religion. It is an origin myth. It is a creation story. And it doesn't matter if you believe it's true or not, and it doesn't matter how much evidence you have of it, and it doesn't matter what you show me, and it doesn't matter that it's science, it still explains where we came from. And because it fills the function of telling us where we came from, this makes it no different than creationism, because the principal reason people care about creationism is because of what it means to them. Creationism is important to people because of what it means in the context of their identity and how they understand who they are and their place in the world, which is why it's a crucial element to who they are. And evolution, while not to everyone who accepts evolution, but to many, does the same thing. It provides an answer to who we are and where we came from, at least in part. And that is why we want it, because humans have this innate desire, an innate need, if you will, to know who we are and where we came from, and to use that knowledge to determine our place in the world which we live in. That is what makes evolution a creation myth, and that is why evolutionism is so important to so many people, because it determines that. That's not the sole reason why people would choose to believe in it. There's a lot more to that, but this video isn't about those topics. For now, I will just repeat, creationism and evolution are both creation stories designed to tell us where we came from, and that is important for people to have, and that is why it is an important topic to this day, and why people debate it, and why people fight for their view of it. It's because it's a crucial part of their identity. That's not to say some people don't fight for it because they believe it is true, but that would still constitute an aspect of who they are. Why is truth important, for instance? If you really think about it, those who try and replace religion with science will often couch scientific ideas in religious language. 
which only further solidifies that they are in reality trying to promote a new form of religion, but thanks to the science versus religion narrative, they believe that they are giving you science instead of religion, but they're relying on the same tools that religion would use. For instance, Carl Sagan is famous for saying we are all star stuff because the materials in our bodies came from exploding stars. He says it with such reverence and awe that he may as well be describing a god or a miracle. And that's the point. He wants you to transfer those feelings you get from religion onto science so that you can abandon religion and embrace science instead. But once you have done that, once you have started viewing certain scientific concepts in the same way you have viewed religious concepts, what's the difference between them and a religious concept? If you're the type of person who would say, well, the difference is it's true and religion isn't, not only have you not actually proven religious claims aren't true, you've just declared that they're not true, but you've kind of missed the point that I'm making. Just because something is true does not make it not religion. And I know many of you would say, maybe not, but religion requires faith. And isn't it true that by definition, faith is belief without evidence? No, no, it's not true. And I also know we're talking about religion, so we should use the religious definition of faith, not the general one. And it's a well-known fact that the religious definition of faith is belief without evidence, and that when you're talking about religion, it means belief without evidence. But that well-known fact isn't very well known outside of atheist circles. Faith isn't belief without evidence, even in the context of religion, and the idea that the religious definition of faith is belief without evidence is nonsense. Please don't bring up Hebrews 11.1. 1. Not only does Hebrews 11.1 1 not actually say faith is belief without evidence, but not all religious people are Christians and thus don't use the New Testament. Now, having said all of that, and I know I haven't elaborated on it, but again, this video isn't about that. I'm just anticipating criticisms. The point I'm making is this. With or without belief in a god, we will come up with principles and ideals to stand for and believe in. We see this in Star Trek, for example, where people will stand up for the ideals of the Federation. But why are they doing so? And consider the amount of reverence that they give things like the Prime Directive or even just vague and, from the audience's point of view, not very well defined principles. What makes them any different than a Christian standing up for Christian ideals? The fact that it's political instead? Quite often when people give up traditional religious beliefs, they bury themselves into political ideologies, and their political ideologies come to define more than just a way to structure society in an immediate fashion, but the way that life should be, the way that we should be. It becomes a defining principle in all aspects of their lives. It's why many people who are in the secular community are so adamant about their political beliefs, and I realize some people who are more in line with uh, various religious movements can also be politically active. But if you notice, the left wing tends to have people in it that are far more dedicated to their political ideology than the right. Typically, there are exceptions. And this is especially pronounced in those who say they have no religion. Their political beliefs become their religion. They just don't call it that. And a lot of the new atheist movement is based far more on social engineering and political ideals than it is on science or on philosophical discussions. They'll say it's not, but it obviously is. If they argue that we should oppose religion because religion creates homophobia, for example, they're not really giving you a reason to believe God doesn't exist. They're simply saying, religion tells you that homosexuality is a sin, therefore you should reject religion, because you don't want to believe that. But you can't prove homosexuality is not a sin just by saying you should reject something that says it's a sin. It also ignores the fact that not all religions, not even all Christian churches, view homosexuality as sinful. One of the problems I keep running into in the atheist community is equivocation. Still, 
would you really look at how people operate in the real world? Religious beliefs aren't going to go away just because you become an atheist. They are simply going to become secular religious beliefs. They're going to become godless religious beliefs. Not only will individuals turn to something to define who they are and give them guidance in life, even if that something is secular, but they will do so as groups. They will expect their group to hold to certain standards, certain ideals, certain beliefs that unite them. They'll come up with their own rituals, even if their rituals are simple things like taking your hat off when the national anthem plays. They'll come up with their own doctrines. They'll come up with their own books that codify what their beliefs are and point to that book whenever there's doubt about something. Use it in the same way Christians use the Bible, for instance. You surely aren't going to disagree with John Smith, who wrote this beautiful essay that defines what we believe in, are you? You certainly don't disagree with this principle that's written down in our charter, do you? You're not going to go against the prime directive, are you? Of course, one may point out that I must be wrong. After all, many of the people who are heavily involved in political ideals are Christians. It's obvious their religion is Christianity and not this political ideal, and yet they can be just as adamant about their politics as anything else. But my answer to that is, religion is again about beliefs. And we should really stop trying to limit things based upon artificial categories. I know many evangelical Christians basically merge their religious beliefs with their political ones. But this doesn't prove that the political ideals aren't a form of religion. Nor does it even mean that they have two religions. What it means is that they have incorporated their political beliefs into their religion. That the form of Christianity that they follow is inherently a political form that has certain political ideals behind it. When it comes to religion, you can do that because it's ultimately about forming a, at least to the person following it, coherent belief system. It isn't about looking at an outside source and how it defines something like Christianity and following that definition. Religion is also dynamic and fluid and changeable. Even though Carl Sagan said it wasn't, it obviously is. Really, everyone is religious, and no one is religious. Everyone is religious, yet religion does not exist. Religion is everywhere, yet religion does not exist. And that's sort of the point that a lot of people don't seem to really understand. In the end, it's all about what you believe, both as an individual and as a member of a group. And I know not every individual is the member of a group, but most are. Religion is entirely about ideologies. Religion is entirely about principles. Religion is entirely about identity. Religion is about the ideas that we carry around in our head, the stories, the mythos, the inspiration, the understanding. Robert Boyd, who, by the way, was a great influence on my own work and the basis of my thesis, is largely derived from his work, once commented that there is no such thing as religion, only culture. And I broadly agree with that conclusion. Robert Boyd, by the way, is an agnostic, I believe, either that or an atheist. But when he studied anthropology, he found no clear distinction between religion 
and secularism, and I tend to agree with, with Dr. Boyd. I tend to believe that as time goes on, cultures develop and the people who are part of that culture adopt certain beliefs and principles and practices that identify them with the culture they belong to. And that as a species, humanity needs that grounding. Because without it, we become aimless and directionless. But religion itself is nothing more than an emergent principle of consciousness. Not something that humanity evolved as a species without. That humanity came into existence with no religion. And then at some point, someone invented religion and it spread. Religion has always been a part of humanity because a desire to know who we are and where we came from and how to live has always been a part of humanity. Religion emerges from basically the same source as science. And in many ways, religion is science. Not some opposite of science. Religious belief is this unifying and yet terrifyingly divisive power on humanity simply because people can unify around beliefs or be divided if they disagree but ultimately people don't fight because religion exists they fight because they disagree over something religion doesn't really cause hostility disagreement over religion can but religion itself does not. Nor does religion hold back science, and in fact, science can be part of religion. Religion doesn't have an absolute clear definition. It's a fluid term. And one I'm not sure has as much utility as we think. Had history gone differently, we may not have a term for religion either. But it's one which utility can be appointed to if you wish to make an argument and create a distinction, such as when atheists argue about how evil or wrong religion is. They obviously need a distinction because they can't be religious if they're arguing against religion, now can they? And that's sort of the issue. What is religion? Religion is whatever we make of it. It is our beliefs, our practices, our goals, and our identity. And in the end, while we do not all share the same religion, we do have in common that we all have a religion, whether we call our religion that or not. For we all have basic beliefs that identify who we are as a people, where we came from, why we exist, and what the ultimate meaning of our existence is, even if there is no ultimate meaning according to the philosophy we believe in. Religion is nothing more than that. It is our worldview, our philosophy, our belief system. It's what defines us. It's what makes us who we are. It's what tells us our identity. It's what gives us our morals. It's what shows us how we should live, gives us ideals to strive for, limits us to what doesn't harm us, and tells us why any of this exists in the first place. That is religion. I don't have much else to say, so I'm going to sign off now. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Thank you, God bless, and goodbye.